Welcome back to Britain's Rarest, a series in which I'll be covering some of our nation's most threatened, but also most beautiful animals. Today, I'll be covering one of Britain's rarest mammals, the grey long-eared bat. Yes, if you didn't know, bats are mammals. In fact, they're the only mammals that can truly fly. This episode is made alongside Wild Ideas, as a contribution to their current Bat Week, and so it would be great if after watching this video, you could go and check them out on Twitter and their website to have a look at some of the fantastic work that's being done to raise awareness for bat conservation this week. Before I get started, here are the timestamps for this video, which are also in the description below, so that you can skip to the parts that you're most interested in. 1. Some facts about the grey long-eared bat. Of all 18 species of bat in the UK, the grey long-eared bat is the second rarest, behind the greater mouse-eared bat, of which only one individual remains. So, by the time that you're watching this, the grey long-eared bat may indeed be Britain's rarest. These bats are extremely similar to the more common brown long-eared bat, albeit much rarer. There are only around a thousand grey long-eared bats left in the UK, consisting of just eight maternity colonies. Females only tend to have one pup annually, each of which can live for five to nine years. Grey long-eared bats hunt for moths and other insects by night over habitats like wildflower meadows in South England. They are intelligent and social animals, and when at rest, they curl their ears back or tuck them away under their wings. Like many other bat species, grey long-eared bats find their prey using echolocation. They can even detect moths by hearing the beating of their wings. 2. How to identify them and tell them apart from brown long-eared bats. Greys have a paler belly, a darker face and a larger body than brown long-eared bats, along with a number of other different features that could only be seen very close up. Greys mainly forage in open spaces and catch their prey in flight, while browns tend to forage over woodlands. The ears of a grey long-eared bat are almost as long as its body. 3. Where to find them Grey long-eared bats can actually be found all across Europe. That said, they aren't known to exist in Wales, Scotland or Ireland, and in England they're restricted to just a few colonies in Sussex, Hampshire, the Isle of Wight, Dorset, Devon and Somerset. They can be seen between April and October, with their main foraging habitats being lowland meadows and marshes. Their roosts are often found in older houses, and they hibernate over the winter in caves, disused mines and even cellars. Whilst grey long-eared bats are fairly common in most of continental Europe, they're thought to be nearing extinction in the UK. 4. Why they're under threat Loss and fragmentation of foraging habitats like grasslands plays a big part in this, as might climate change. Less roosting sites being available also makes the bats more vulnerable to severe winters. Grey long-eared bats are relatively long-living and slow-reproducing animals with small population sizes, so they can't easily adapt to fast changes in climate. 5. Why you should help them I spoke to the head of the Back from the Brink project, the main conservation project working to save the grey long-eared bat, and he gave me the following reasons for why it's so important that we save this species from extinction. Firstly, bats are excellent indicators of more general environmental health. Grey long-eared bats have a strong association with unimproved grasslands, a habitat of which we've lost over 97% since the end of World War II. Landscapes like these have become smaller, degraded and less well connected, and sensitive species like the grey long-eared bat are good indicators of wider implications on biodiversity. Secondly, bats eat a lot of insects and they can help to suppress pests like crane flies in agriculture. Healthier bat populations and healthier natural ecosystems could mean that we don't have to use as many pesticides, which is better for everyone. Thirdly, wildlife enriches our own lives in many ways. If you want to know more about why conservation is important and why saving species matters to you, then check out my Conservation Basics playlist. This contains videos explaining everything you need to know about why conservation is so crucial not just to the wildlife but to us too. 6. How you can help them One easy way to help the conservation of grey long-eared bats is to support the organisations who are already working on it. 
This includes the Wildlife Trusts and also the Bat Conservation Trust, who run the Back from the Brink project that I mentioned earlier. This project aims to increase the foraging habitat for grey long-eared bats around known roosting sites. Another thing that you could do to help out more directly is to monitor grey long-eared bats for population surveys. This is a great way to get up close to bats. If you want to know more about how to get involved, then check out the Bat Conservation Trust's website, which will be linked in the description. Lastly, grey long-eared bats are associated with farmland that has healthy habitats and that is well connected in the landscape. Because of this, you should consider where you purchase your food and the processes behind it. You could even support organisations like the Nature Friendly Farming Network, which will also give you more information about how you can help. If you've enjoyed this video and you're interested in learning about how you can help other animal species near you, then make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos.